Hey guys, welcome to the Pulse Radiology Anatomy series. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. We love having you here. Hey guys, today we're going to be reviewing the MRI of the elbow. If you find these videos informative or helpful, uh, feel free to subscribe to our channel. To the left, we have our slide going over patient positioning. To the right, we have our MRI you know, protocol uh, slide. So to the left, patient position, you're going to usually um, position the patient supine, feet first. Uh, you're going to want to offset to the left for the right elbow, and you're going to want to offset to the right to the for the left elbow. So if there's a patient that's too big or what, for whatever reason, you can also opt to do something called the Superman position, which allows you to position the patient prone on their stomach with their arm above their head. That allows you to essentially use an H-channel coil or, or uh, a flex coil, um, but for for any other reason that's another position okay you want to ensure that you're externally rotated that hand up uh, i always say flat hand you know you want it to point to the sky uh, that allows the joint to open up the landmark is going to be the allocronon process um, you're going to have that flex coil or a channel coil right there dead center on the elbow uh, again you know the coil selections are here if the patient's flat on their back supine, maybe some leg support, have them in a relaxed position. Relaxed patients equals less motion. Um, Earplugs or headphones for music are all uh, options for, um, I guess, communication or, or hearing protection or uh, entertainment. So uh, let's move it on over to the MRI elbow protocol. Sequence options, flow compensation on, no phase wrap on. Um, saturation, you're gonna have it uh, in, superior and inferior to the area that's being scanned, especially on the axial or, or short axis planes. Um, that's gonna, you know, essentially uh, reduce the um, blood flow artifact on that on those axials coming into the plane. So obviously a three plane localizer to start, you do want some sort of fat saturation, whether that's an IR or a T2 fat set or proton density fat set, whatever it is, that's gonna sort of identify fractures, edema patterns, and visualize the long axis of the ulnar and radial collateral ligaments, articulations of the radial humeral and unal, uh, ulnar humeral joints. So that fat saturation allows us to see any fractures, edema patterns, infections, you know, um, so on and so forth, inflammation of the elbow. Then you want to kind of go into your three planes of whatever your doctor likes to see. Okay, remember, no imaging center is created equally. So it can be either T1, T2, proton density. Uh, in some situations, there might be gradients for PVNS. Um, you know, there's many, many options that can be here, but coronal, you're really gonna look for a couple things and we'll go over that in the anatomy part of this. The axial is really sort of the money shot. You're gonna see everything in cross section, um, you know, musculature um, and all that other good stuff. Uh, and then finally, the last one is a sagittal plane, which allows us, it's probably the least most important image, but allows us to see it in sort of profile. So let's take a look over at the anatomy piece. Okay, guys, let's take a look at the MRI images. We're going to start from the distal aspect of the elbow. Okay, and, and we're going to cover axially all the way into the humerus. Okay, so distally, we have the brachioradialis muscle starting in sort of the proximal forearm, extensor digitorum muscle as well. Uh, as we sort of come back, we're going to see that the bicep tendon um, is sort of inserting into the radial uh, tubercle or tuberosity. So radial uh, brachioradialis muscle, extensor digitorum, extending through, and you'll see those follow through as we move through. Uh, biceps tendon, biceps tendon, okay, we got the radial head. This is the biceps tendon attachment, okay, or the insertion into that radial head. Okay, and as you can see here, the biceps tendon is now gonna come forward uh, as we move through the planes, okay? through, 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 let's follow that biceps tendon. Okay, and that's what we're looking for when you have sort of that biceps tendon rupture. Okay, and you can see that tendon now turn into the biceps muscle. Okay, so biceps tendon. Uh, if you wanna get fancy, you can always do the FABS view. Um, it's a, a MRI projection, also x-ray, where your arm is going to be at 90 degrees uh, with your hand sort of uh, externally rotated. Okay, and then what you can do is use a shoulder coil. So that's gonna, uh, and then you would essentially um, scan perpendicular to the forearm, and that'll show the biceps tendon uh, perfectly in profile. I'll try and add a picture of that below. 
So as you kind of scroll through, you'll see the median nerve, another important piece. That's this little nerve here, and you're gonna see that kind of follow all the way through, okay? Any inflammation of that nerve, it'll be super, super white or hyper intensity. Um, so keep a lookout for that. Uh, any nerve stuff, you wanna increase your matrices. So 5, 12, 3, 8, 4, I would say is the minimum. Uh, but again, anything that high will cause some motion. So we need a good patient for that. Uh, common flexor tendon, you can see here as well, coming in and attaching. Um, let's see, the, brachial, the brachialis tendon as well, coming through and attaching, okay, right in here. Okay, on the other side, you have your common extensor tendon, okay, that's going to be attaching to the radius here, okay. Let's kind of scroll through here. Okay, and alongside just inferior is the extensor digitorum muscle connecting as well. Okay, so let's move over to the coronal images. Okay, let's just sort of start with extensor, uh, common extensor tendon origin. Okay, a lot of these ligaments and tendons are going to be bundled up here. Okay, and as they come off, you can see that they're sort of separate. Um, ironically, there is a little bit of inflammation between these ligaments. So uh, you're able to sort of see the, the difference in that bundle. Uh, normally, if there wasn't any inflammation, you wouldn't be able to see it. It would be one thick, robust piece of ligament. Okay, uh, we have the trochlea, okay, the capitellum, okay, of the humerus. And then the uh, on the elbow as or the forearm aspect, you're going to have the radius and the ulna and then the articulating services, surfaces of the humeral ulnar joint and the radiocapitellar joint, okay? Um, let's kind of move into the ligaments. Okay, you can see your radiocollateral ligament or your RCL, okay? And again, your common extender tendon origin. Common flexor tendon on the other side, so on the ulnar side, it's the flexor tendon, but on the radial side, it's the extensor tendon. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, you have your sublime tubercle here. Okay, piece of the ulna. Okay, so there's not really too much to be looking for on the coronals, but uh, I would kind of understand that these pieces of anatomy are somewhat important that you want to look for. So um, again, uh, any questions, you can always reach out to me at Neil Huber at PulseRadiology.com. Thanks for watching.